Yo, what's up? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Wednesday, November 3rd, 2021. I'm one of your hosts, Blessing, Addy Oye Jr. Joining me is twitch.tv slash Andy Cortez. Good morning, Blessing, Addy Oye Jr. Andy, I see you're still wearing the same baseball jersey that you were on Gamescast. I love to see you represent. Had to rock it again. Braves won the World Series last night. I was a, I was a ball of hey, is tears. That a, is that a good thing? Is that a good oh, thing or a bad thing? For they real? won it all. They won it all last night. That, that, is, that is your team. Yeah, yeah. That is my team. Okay. Yeah. Won the World Series. You did Congratulations. It. I was a mess. I was a mess. Uh, I, I immediately just started crying. I'm on this text thread with my brother, my dad, and my cousin. We're all just like fucking losing our shit. Um, and hopefully, bless, this is a step towards getting rid of the uh, the racist Native American name. Let's get, let's get rid of that oh, imagery. Yeah. Let's get a new name. Let's get a new logo. Oh, yeah. what, what, what are your thoughts? What, what do you think they should go with for a new name and logo? I don't know, but I, lo- I love the idea of just having a yeah, new... Yeah, Atlanta baseball sort of, team. I love an idea. No, hopefully not Washington <laughs> football team. I love the idea of just ha- like the red tails or, or you know, because like, I mean, they have the Hawks, Atlanta Hawks. They have mm. the uh, Atlanta uh, Thrashers. I think that's still the hockey team. Uh, correct the me. Thrashers? Kind of I've, never, I've wrong. never heard of this. That is a fantastic name for a sports team. Oh, shit. Maybe I'm wrong. Can they, you have imagine the, they have the going Falcons against the in the thrashers? NFL. Um, yeah, the Thrashers are still a team. Oh, good for them. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. No, they. Wait. No, it looks like they ended yeah, in everybody, 2000. Everybody in chat are saying, are saying they're dead. <laughs> they ended in 2000. The Atlanta Falcons, though, still a football team. Um, Why did they get rid of the Thrashers? That's one that I would keep around. That Holy one's shit. dope as hell. Yeah, 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 that one's dope as hell. But the city of Atlanta just used to always getting their hearts broken. If you remember, bless, the Falcons were beating the Patriots 28 to 3 in the Super Bowl. Uh, luckily, I'm not a Falcons fan, but the Patriots came back <laughs> from a 28 to three deficit. The last year, the Braves blew a three one lead against the Dodgers. This year, I thought it was going to happen against the Dodgers. It didn't. I thought it was going to happen against the Astros. It didn't. World Series champions. I can't fucking believe it. That's awesome. I, I mean, I, I feel I feel your feelings a little bit because growing up in Central Illinois, I was around a lot of people who are Cubs fans, and like I've never been one to like be a, like a hardcore baseball fan whatsoever. But I would always live vicariously through other people who would year after year go, "Oh All my right. god, I can't believe the Cubs are this bad of a team." <laughs> and then it wasn't until I moved out of Illinois. It was like the I think the year I moved out of Illinois where the Cubs finally won a World Series, and everybody was er, er, like everybody was taken aback and like blown away and so happy and i remember like looking the curse is broken i was looking through facebook and everybody was so happy it it like i me not being a a sports person i totally i I totally see it through other people and i get it i'm like you know what man good for y'all i'm very happy for y'all for getting this victory Uh, last time they won a world series was in 1995 i was a little baby i mean not really i was like five or six and i just don't remember anything about it bless Mm -hmm. and it's been years of heartache since and they finally did it. It was awesome. Well, Andy, speaking of heartache, let's talk about today's stories, which include Overwatch 2 and Diablo 4 getting delayed, no. Elden Ring gameplay incoming, and yeah. more because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday at 10 a.m. live right here on twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. If you're watching live, you can correct us when we get stuff wrong by going to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. If you don't want to watch live, you can watch later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames, roosterteeth.com, or you can listen later on pod podcast services around the globe by searching for kind of funny games daily remember you can use epic creator code kind of funny on all epic store and epic in-game purchases like rocket league and fortnite to help support the channel to be a part of the show at the patreon.com slash kind of funny games or bronze members or above get to write in and silver members or above get the show ad free with the exclusive daily post show housekeeping for you remember extra life is happening this saturday from 11 a.m pacific time to 11 p.m uh, that's going to be a bunch of games like mario party and metal gear a bunch of shenanigans will nick and andy take the sats we'll see will i be drinking too much whiskey probably uh and more that'll all be going down again this saturday right here on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games but you can donate and join the team right now by going to kind of funny.com slash extra life the goal is to raise a hundred thousand dollars for the children's miracle network of hospitals it's for a good cause so come out support and let's have a good time and speaking of a good time. Uh, a new episode of the Games Cast is up right now. Imran Khan returns from Fanbyte uh, for an episode to talk with us uh, for our reviews of Riders Republic and Mario Party Superstars and a preview of Shin Megami Tensei 5. That is up right now on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and on podcast services around the globe. Thank you to our Patreon producers, Prank C and Blackjack. Today we're brought to you by Honey, American Giant, and Credit Karma, but 
We'll tell you about that later for now. Let's begin with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. It's time for some news. We have six stories today. A baker's dozen. Starting with our number one, kind of a heartbreaker. Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2 have been delayed, and Jen O'Neill steps down from Blizzard. I'm pulling from Imran Khan at Fanbyte. And this is a funny one because in our Slack channel, we of course have the KFGD Slack channel. And when this news broke yesterday, there was a fight. Uh, not a real fight, but like, you know, kind of a real fight between Tamor and Imran violent, Khan. Yeah. It got a little bit violent. They're, they're, mm -hmm. people, people, of course, like to drop the sources in the KFGD Slack. And both Tamor came through and they're like, well, Tamor was like, I got the better, I got the better source right here at GameSpot.com. And then out of nowhere, like Randy Orton in the, in the WWE with an RKO, Imran Khan comes through and it's like, hey, Fanbyte has your, has your stuff too. And I read through, I read through Fanbytes and I was like, it's a good write up. This is a good write up right here. Oh, 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 I don't know what to say. Bless, bless you picking a side right bless on the air like side, that. Kevin. Damn. I'm just saying, Tamora, you got to step up your game. Fanbyte wow. had all the stuff I need oh, concise, concisely written in the voice that I like, the voice of Imran Khan. Uh, wow. So we're going to dive into hey, it. Fam, that's on things? him. That's not, uh, that's not all of us. I'm willing to say it. You guys are cowards. I'm willing to say it. I think y'all are doing great. I think everybody's doing great. Everybody's doing great. All I'm saying is that there's somebody here that's doing better. His name's Imran Khan. Again, I'm holding from Imran at Fanbyte. Uh, Imran writes, it's obviously not been a great year at Activision Blizzard. Between the numerous state lawsuits about violations of labor law and just, well, general awfulness, there has been a lot for the company to hang their hat on in the game space to distract most people from all that either. That problem is only exacerbated as two of the, of the publisher's biggest upcoming titles, Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2, have been delayed to an indeterminate point in the future, which I'm going to pause there and mention that like when this <laughs> broke, I went in the Slack and I was like, how are you going to delay games that don't even have a release date that is wild that these two games are getting delayed but i think that speaks volumes to where we can expect these games to land to continue the news story the news comes from an activision blizzard release ahead of their quarterly earnings call stating that both games are quote now planning for a later launch than originally envisaged end quote Seeing as how neither game had a public date, but were presumed to release in 2022, it's entirely possible they're missing their integral target dates and may even slip to 2023 or beyond. Overwatch 2 feels particularly needed as work beyond, as work has stopped on the first game to focus on the development of a now further off sequel. Additionally, Blizzard co-leader Jen O'Neill has chosen this time to announce her departure as, as co-lead of the company. O'Neill and Mike Ibarra, formerly of Xbox, were installed as co-equal leaders of Blizzard after J. Allen Brack stepped down, following allegations uh, uh, he ignored a culture of sexual harassment and discrimination at the studio in August. Yes, that's August of 2021, three months ago. On social media, several Blizzard employees have indicated that they only heard about O'Neill's departure uh, during the investor call and were not told ahead of time. O'Neill will be leaving Ibarra in sole charge of the studio, transferring her responsibilities to him before the end of the year, leaving a company with seemingly massive sexual discrimination issues back to a single man in control. Andy, there's multiple places we can jump in uh, to here. Where do you want to start? Uh, what what a tire fire this is like this already was and continues to be. Um, I I thought we would keep on seeing slow news leaks about what's happening in terms of the workplace lawsuits but we're continued to we're continuing to get news about games that are continuing to get delayed this is just an absolute shit show blessing and i don't know where the light at the end of the tunnel is yeah, I think this is, uh, we keep talking about it, right? Part of the ongoing happenings of, of Activision Blizzard and the ongoing story of how do you recover or how do you, I guess, salvage the work conditions that you've established and continue to work toward progress. Uh, in light of this news, part of the the uh, investor calls here, there was a statement released on investor.activision.com talking a bit about like all the all the that business sounds like a stuff. fake website it does sound like <laughs> a fake website it's them talking about all the business <laughs> stuff that you do during uh, uh during a call like this but uh daniel ahmad on twitter at zuge ex uh tweeted out okay Jugate EX, thank you. I knew I mispronounced it, but I couldn't remember the actual thing. Uh, he tweeted out, there's a new statement from Activision Blizzard on some of the actions it's taking to address the ongoing investigations into the toxic workplace it's fostered. And so I'm going to read from the excerpt from investor.activision.com. 
We are committed to becoming the, the most welcoming, inclusive company in our industry. We're taking further steps to advance our commitment with greater impact, transparency, and urgency. We're adding staff and resources to our ethics and compliance and employee, and this is bullet pointed by the way, so this is the first bullet point that I'm reading. We're adding staff and resources to our ethics and compliance and employee relations teams. We're continuing to thoroughly investigate each and every cl claim and complaint that we receive. As a result of this process, more than 20 individuals have exited the company in recent months. Next bullet point. We are implementing a zero tolerance harassment policy across Activision Blizzard that will be applied consistently. Our goal is to have the strictest harassment and non-retaliation policies of any employer. Next bullet point. Based on feedback from employees, we are waiving required arbitration of future in individual sexual harassment and discrimination claims, which that is huge. That is a huge one right there. Um, but to keep going, next bullet point. We have introduced the goal of increasing the percentage of women and non-binary people in our workforce by 50% within the next five years more than one third across the entire company. Next bullet point, we plan to invest an additional $250 million over the next 10 years in initiatives that foster expanded opportunities in gaming and technology for underrepresented communities. And then uh, to help to help us re continue to recruit, retain, and promote empl employees from all backgrounds and identities, we are implementing the requirement for a diverse slate of candidates for all full-time open positions. And then the last bullet point, a, rev a review of 2020 U.S. pay equity at our company conducted by an independent firm showed that women on average earned slightly more than men for comparable work in 2020. We're committed to compensation remaining equitable for men and women performing comparable work in 2021 and beyond. And again, part of the ongoing story of the steps being taken beyond uh, to help uh, uh, strive toward progress at Activision Blizzard and what the work conditions are. And a lot of this, I would say, is pretty like these are good standards. These are like these are these are good steps. I think the best step here is getting rid of the the required uh, arbitration for the individual claims because I remember that being a huge thing. That was a huge conversation point in terms of employees having to go through folks that Activision Blizzard bring in to yeah. to uh, essentially argue for them or like uh, uh, like ha have that conversation of where where these disputes land and that that never really ended up on the side of the employee or at, at the very least the employee the employee side of Activision Blizzard never never felt like they were getting the full benefit right the full the full support that they needed in those talks and those claims and so getting rid of that is huge that is big but andy like for you jumping off of this like where are you at with that where are you at with the delays as well these are all very obviously very good things on a surface level i'm still worried about the exiting of jen o'neill yeah. and exactly what the fallout from that is and whether there's more there um, as opposed to maybe just an individual wanting to leave the company because maybe she got a better opportunity somewhere else. I think that that's the thing that I want, that I'm more focused on right now. Because right now, it really feels like this is a broken relationship that's trying so hard to keep things afloat by throwing all of these, you know, obviously good things for employees that are currently employed and for future people that may want to, uh, future prospects that may want to be employed by Activision Blizzard. But... At the top, we still have a woman executive quitting. And yeah. so far, the only story is a woman executive quit. And we don't really know exactly. Like, I I would like to uh, maybe hear from her and, and have her say, no, I got a better opportunity. I got, a, you know, I got hired by whatever other uh, company. I think that's the most worrying thing so far. Um, now, to the more unimportant shit, um, when we talk about game delays, I, I'm i with you when you've typed that in Slack. Absolutely. What the hell are we doing with, with Overwatch? How that game never had a date. How are you going to push the date that never existed? Um, and I think a lot of that is just to sort of be more uh, transparent in a way for the fans who are like, yo, where's this game at? It debuted two years ago as of yesterday, Blessing. It debuted two years ago as of yesterday. That's when we first saw the reveal for Overwatch 2. And this game continues to sort of be in a messy state of 
is it what's the development looking Dude, like are they I still working so much. things i worry so I'm much so about worried this game yeah, yeah because we've seen we, at this point we've seen quite a bit of this game like me and you we we've done multiple reaction streams to them breaking down what uh, a lot of the changes are looking like in terms of like the intricate character changes how they're adding in more like destructible stuff to, to uh, for like the uh enemy npcs when you're shooting them down the vision for what the single player stuff is going to be or the campaign stuff i should say is going to be um like we've seen the we've seen new maps We've seen tons of shit for Overwatch 2, and Overwatch 1 came out in 2016, if I remember correctly, right? It's been a while, and I think the big thing that is making me go, what the fuck has happened, is the fact that Overwatch 1 is pretty much, they're pretty much done with the updates for that game. You're not really get, you're not going to get new characters, you're not going to get new maps, like that game is pretty much has pretty much sunsetted in terms of new updates, and the idea there is, oh, cool, you're sunsetting as we approach the release of Overwatch 2. And at the beginning of this year, we did, we did our, our whole uh, fantasy draft thing for, for Gamescast. I was predicting, I was like, for sure we're going to get Overwatch 2 this year, right? And now that we're at the, at the end of this year, I was like, for sure we're going to get Overwatch 2 next year, right? The idea that they're, that they're coming out and saying, hey, we're delaying this game makes me think, oh, are we not getting this game until 2023? And at that point, what is the vision for this game? Is this game still going to be the iterative, hey, this is Overwatch 1.5, and, and you're still going to have crossplay with Overwatch 1, and it's still going to be all of that? And if that's the case, then, like, where are we at in terms of just the stopping point that, we are, that we're at with Overwatch 1? I feel like it's so weird to be at this point where we're just not getting more overwatch content like i i don't think that is good for for overwatch as a game and a, and a franchise to have like a hard stop like this uh when that is a game that has such a huge fan base and a, a game that i think leans a lot on being active and continually giving players content to feel involved in all these things diablo 4 as well is one that i know a lot of people are looking forward to and again like both these games getting delayed at the same time strikes me a lot uh like about like i guess it was a year or two years ago when when ubisoft looked at their slate of games leading up to i think it was like immortals and a bunch of other games and they were like hey let's delay everything because nothing's sticking right now we got to take a step back and look at everything and look at how our uh like our our we need to look at our release slate and and what our um uh like process is as ubisoft to figure out how to make better games so they delayed everything right. this strikes me a little bit as that of activision blizzard looking around and going all right let's take a let's take a pause Let's take a breather. Let's look at what works and what doesn't work. And I think that is both in what works for the games and also what works and what doesn't work in our culture because we are under a spotlight right now and we do not have the space to fuck up. And we and we, we probably need the space to help remedy a lot of these things. Like that's that's the vibes I'm getting from this. I wonder if at any point we've seen them sort of absorb a lot of smaller studios uh, and have them become support studios. I wonder if they are rethinking putting more assets and putting more time into overwatch one and just kind of having something there for the de dedicated fan base that continues to still play it because at this point i think it makes sense to say hey we are completely stopping work on overwatch one we are full uh we are heads down on overwatch two and we can't wait to bring you new updates whenever that game uh, comes closer to its release date mm -hmm. And I think if you're pushing Overwatch 2 out further, possibly this opens up some room, Blessing, to say, hey, since Overwatch 2 is coming out later, here's a, here's a, a, a new map. I don't even know what, how, what they would introduce at this point. You know, they're not going to introduce a new character at this point. Yeah. Um, but just something that isn't, you know, because every once in a while they will release new deathmatch maps. Nobody really cares about deathmatch. It's, it's, people want to play on a new payload map or a new whatever map. Is there a way to sort of appease the fans that are still playing uh, in a hardcore way that know, oh shit, I thought I was going to have to wait eight months, ten months for Overwatch 2. Maybe it's going to be closer to two years for Overwatch 2. It felt, if when we watched those streams, it felt like that game was around the corner. That is the thing that blows my mind is that they've made so much headway in terms of what the like the the what the new structure of it is going to be the 5v5 as opposed to the 6v6 the like what they're doing for tanks what they're doing for the actual meta of overwatch it felt very late in development and so yeah i'm curious to, to know i'm curious to see if this means big changes for overwatch 2 or if it just means hey we're just sitting on it for now while we wait and like let it gestate a little bit and May, we want to make sure that this is the game that we want it to be before we put it out to the world because when you put out a game called overwatch 2 that has big expectations behind it overwatch 1 is one of the, the biggest 
uh, multiplayer games of the last generation, right? And when you put out a game called Overwatch 2, I think you want to have a a um, comparable, sizable, like, splash, right? You want that to hit. You want people to look at that and go, oh, shit, like, it's here and everybody be playing it at the same time. You don't want it to feel like an Overwatch 1.1 update. And so I wonder if this is them looking at that and going, cool, how do we make this the biggest thing possible? Or who knows? Like, maybe, maybe um, uh, Je- Jeff Overwatch, what's his last name? <laughs> Uh, um jeff kaplan jeff kaplan yeah maybe jeff kaplan leaving uh, leads to them going cool like what do we how, how do we steer What's the, the ship now that he's gone yeah. what is the vision of this thing like there's so many elements that can be at play here but i i, I do think that if work. anything this may hopefully change in ways for the better um when we talk about their structure for games and how um about a year ago maybe we recorded a games cast talking about how they wanted to structure their games based on one singular sort of here is where all the games interconnect warzone is our one is our big battle royale game for call of duty and we uh, and circling around it we have call of duty campaign we have call of duty multiplayer we have call of duty mobile and all those games in some ways will feed into warzone into kind of like how they all sort of interact with each other and they wanted to have that model for all of their franchises for diablo Mm. they they we saw them with the mobile game with overwatch we were assuming they would announce some sort of mobile title as well to go along with overwatch the multiplayer and then aside from that having overwatch single player maybe this sort of makes them rethink their whole process with it who knows who knows andy let's switch gears to some more exciting news story number two we're getting a new look at elden ring gameplay very soon how soon you ask literally tomorrow this comes from a tweet at elden ring on twitter they tweeted out join us for a 15 minute glimpse of hashtag elden ring gameplay on november 4th at 3 p.m cet or 7 a.m uh, pt pacific time uh, and that's going down on their youtube and their twitch channels coming off of that i got a write-in from anonymous who writes in and says uh, and you can write it to patreon.com so that's kind of funny games like anonymous did uh, anonymous says what are your hype levels for the elden ring gameplay we're going to see tomorrow what is something you hope to see what is something you hope not to see which i think is an interesting ang- angle on this Andy, what are your hype level levels for this Elden Ring gameplay reveal? 15 minutes. The most we're ever going to see of Elden Ring. That's such a long Until time. I, I I mean, I can't hold back a smile right now. Knowing that tomorrow we'll get this glimpse, and it's likely what the press was shown, I believe. Um, mm-hmm. Because uh, I, I know some ago. press yeah, some press got to see it uh, behind closed doors, the stuff that they didn't show, that we were expecting them to show a bit of um, during E3 and at the summer games fest i i mean my hype levels are through the roof blessing for for all of the kind of funny fans in the past that have been like man i wish anybody at kind of funny played souls games well you're about to not hear the end of it because we're about to like not we're about to be insufferable we're gonna be ever. so insufferable when this game comes out let me Dude, tell you like it's one of those blessings where you're like what would i tell a younger version of myself what would i tell a younger version of those of those YouTube commenters are like fucking kind of funny. Never play Souls games, guys. You have a huge, you have a rich future. Uh, oh you God. have a rich Wait, future to prepare to pause, for. To pause here, where are you at with Sekiro? Because I know you've been streaming that, and I, I really want the Sekiro update from Andy. Are you liking it? Oh, baby, oh, I'm loving yeah. it. Blessing, I am loving it. I didn't think I would. I got to the point where I was like, you know what? Yeah, I knew you would. I knew you would. Here's here, and here's where I was coming from. I was like, Blessing, I prefer, and I. Th- think i still prefer it now i don't know but after a lot of sekiro my mind goes to um dark souls one when gwyn the final boss jumps at me leaps at me from like a mile away blessing and i perfectly go boom and i fucking deflect his ass and he gets stunned and i go for the backside like i i think i prefer that still as opposed to whittling down the posture meter in sekiro the stagger meter but god damn, what a what a game. Uh, oh my god, blessing. Yeah. I beat I, I beat the apes and the uh, no spoilers there, but oh my god, holy Guardian shit. Ape. What dude, a what game, a re- dude. What a reveal that is. But then also, yeah, what I, that might be oh, it's so tough because there are so many great action games and I really like um like the fast pace or I like the technical action games, right? And so when I think of what are my favorite uh uh, uh like my one of my favorite combat systems in games, Sekiro might be my number one, or at the very least, it's my it's in my S tier of 
this is on another level. Like Sekiro and Bloodborne, both for sure. And as I was playing Bloodborne, I was playing a lot of that uh, with Imran on the stream, and we were talking back and forth, and Imran was kind of hyping me up for Sekiro. And one of the things that Imran noticed was how much I, how good I was at the, um, like the using the blunderbuss as my counter. I was surgical with that shit, Andy. I loved using that shit so much. Oh, yeah. And uh, uh, Imran was like, dude, if you like countering, just wait until you play Sekiro. And you know, my my opening hours of Sekiro were definitely a struggle. That was definitely a, oh, a yeah. hump I had to get over. But once I started to understand that combat system, once I beat um uh, what, I think it was Genichiro. Is Genichiro the one that's on like one of the roofs that yeah, you meet? Yeah, that's and, that's the one that the blessing. It took me two and a half hours, fifty attempts to beat Genichiro, and it's that moment where everybody in chat was like, "Now you know how to play the game, dude." Yep. And it's it's the it's the now the real Dark Souls begins because it's like. Beating Genitro was like a huge moment, and now from then on, it's like Guardian Ape, seventeen attempts. Get out of my stupid ass face, dude! dude. Like, what a fucking game! I can't wait to see what sort of thing. So, uh, as as per the question, what am I excited about? I'm excited to hopefully see different fighting styles. I'm excited to see how they, because we've seen in the trailer how one of the characters seems pretty Sekiro like in terms of movement and in terms of of uh, speed you know um we're not seeing this big sort of we're not always seeing a big lumbering character with a shit ton of armor and a gigantic you know 19 foot long sword um it seems very much like there are going to be a lot of different play styles and they are kind of bringing all the elements in the best elements from souls games what am i hoping not to see a oh, man i don't i don't even know what i'm hoping not to see i'm, I'm maybe story spoilers or how can you even spo spoil a game like that without having yeah, any true. sort of crumb of info on it but um I, I yeah it's hard for me to say what not to see what are you what are you feeling bless i i really want to see the open world and how that's going to work because in the previews that we've gotten before a lot of people were comparing it some, to something like breath of the wild and i know that's a tired comparison for open world games but Breath of the Wild is like literally my favorite game ever. And so when you tell me a, a, an open world is going to take it after something like that, I get hyped. Oh, uh, yeah. And like just, just off, off the idea of the go wherever you want. There are dungeon, dungeons scattered wherever that you can find and discover and get into and all this stuff. That for me strikes me as very exciting. And it's fu funny, like the um, I'm going to pull a comparison to Horizon, Horizon Forbidden West, which might be an unlikely, unlikely comparison for Elden Ring. But the reason I pull it is because them saying that it's going to be 15 minutes long, I think gives them a lot of space to talk about the game in a, in a very deep way. And I remember coming off of the pre previous Horizon Forbidden West state of play that we got in like, I think it was like June uh, or maybe it was May. And uh, in that one, we got a lot of gameplay features. We got a lot of like, hey, here's the here's how the melee looks. Here's um, uh, Aloy climbing. Here's how swimming underwater looks. And the one thing I, I wanted, or at least what I'd want from a follow-up uh, gameplay demo for Horizon would be for them to go, all right, cool. Now here's what exploring the open world is like. Here's how we've like upgraded it for this game as compared to the last game. Uh, yeah. I I think that's the thing I, I almost care about more than even like the, the hardcore like moment to moment gameplay mechanics. I want to know how the open world is going to open and like what the different areas of the maps are going to of the map is going to look like you know what is is are there mountains that i can climb right like is there a snowy area that's the type of shit that gets me excited for an open world game and yeah. so i think 15 minutes is a lot of time and they might be able to dive into that stuff and so i, I hope got, to see some of that i got one more and it comes to miyazaki and the way his brain works when it comes to uh game design and one thing that really excites me and kind of always impresses me whenever i encountered in one of the souls games has to do with world states and yeah. when you when you beat an enemy sometimes the world changes and now from and from now on you could expect x y and z and i'm excited to see how that's implemented in this world where we will have a day and night cycle like how man what enemies are coming out at night what enemies are coming out in day what what can be accessed during the day that cannot be that can't be accessed at night that's the sort of shit i'm really excited about as well because he gets so I mean, uh, Miyazaki and the From Software team get so freaking creative with what things can be done at certain times. And it's that shit that just kind of always blows me away. And I go, God damn, they are so creative. Why? <laughs> like, yeah, Nobody's wonder, doing it like this, dude. I wonder how much of it is going to be. I, I think the comparison I'll make would be like Deathloop, where 
you're during the yeah. daytime you can do these certain things but then at night like things change and all of a sudden you can yeah. go into this area and shit is fucked up i hope it's not i hope it doesn't go as far as something like dying light where in the nighttime you get the fucking ter- terrifying creatures because <laughs> like the struggle for me in bloodborne which is that the bloodborne was a very scary game for me i was terrified throughout my whole, exp- whole yeah. experience playing that game and so if it gets to nighttime and all of a sudden snake creatures are coming out then that's gonna be that's gonna be the game that i'm like cool i'm gonna play this whole thing during the day then (laughs) because i can't can't do it there's something to it though of being the sort of brave warrior though blessing like the the Mm -hmm. the 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 foul tarnished you are the one sort of on this quest and there's something about it that kind of when you're put in that mode like when we're talking if this game were a survival horror game and you had a gun that had seven bullets and you had to really like look under every corner and under every rock to find bullets. That's a different vibe to me than I am on this hero's quest and I have my horse that jumps two miles up into the air. It's just, Oh my gosh, I'm so freaking excited. Are we going to do a live reactions or what? I'm down. I'm down. I, after this conversation, Woo! I think I got to do it. Okay, so baby. That's going to be, what, 7 a.m. tomorrow? And so God, this week in. is exhausting. I've been waking yeah, up so early. Every God it's my third KFG in a row, and I'm like, man, if I could just sleep in one of these days, that'd be great. But I'm gonna I've been having to stay tomorrow. up late for other reasons as well, and I'm very excited for this. Bless. God. But uh, for, to, for me to answer, answer the final part of the question, what is something you hope not to see? I hope, it, I hope graphically it looks good, right? I, I hope we're, we're not like shown gameplay tomorrow and it looks kind of i guess shank in terms of the visuals that and i say that because it elder ring having the shift to open world i think gives it a lot of room to lose i guess that visual quality that you're that you would get from something from some from software and coming off of demon souls from blue point that game looks hot that game looks incredible and i think a big part of that is well it's a linear game so you're able to put a lot of a lot more tlc and care uh around how the visuals look i i have trust in from software in terms of art style i think the art direction i got confidence that that shit is going to slap but i also do hope that visual fidelity and the textures and like the like the, i hope there's not like pop in and like all that all that shit i hope they got that shit ironed out and nailed down because if they do then i think this is going to be on another level it's probably going to still look like doo doo if it's 1080p I hope that they release like a 1440p or 4K uh, trailer. And that, that way YouTube shows us a lot nicer of a bit, right? Because 1080p videos just generally look like caca doo doo, unfortunately. Yeah. Andy, if people want to watch videos that look great and that are filled with great content, but they don't want ads in them, they can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games where they can get the show oh, ad free. And speaking of ads, let us tell you about our sponsors. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Honey. It's time to start thinking about what you're going to get your friends and family for the holidays. And don't be stingy this year. That's okay. I have a little magic that'll bring some extra cheer this year. It's a little thing called Honey. Honey is your personal online shopping assistant. It scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. And Honey supports over 30,000 stores online. So imagine you're shopping at your favorite site, right? When you go to checkout, the Honey button will drop down and all you have to do is click apply coupons. Then sit back and kick your feet up while Honey searches for coupons. If it finds one, you'll watch the price drop. Uh, We love Honey very much here. Kevin uses it for everything that we buy here for Kind of Funny because we like deals and we like to save money and you should too. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free installs in a few seconds and by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. We'd never recommend something we don't use here at Kind of Funny. So go over and get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash games. That's joinhoney.com slash games. We're also brought to you by American Giant. Let's be honest, since we're all thinking about it, buying gifts during the holiday season is stressful. It's all about tearing your hair out, trying to find the perfect gift, spending a boatload of money, keeping secrets from your loved ones, and resisting the temptation of the classic gift card cop-out. But there's one thing that everyone loves, a good hoodie, especially now when stylish comfort is essential. So get everyone on your list and maybe even yourself a classic full zip hoodie from American Giant. Uh, Gia loves her hoodie, she swears by it. Tim's used American Giant hoodies, he loves the quality of them. You should too. Uh, American Giant is about the journey, not just the destination. They're obsessed with the details from start to finish, so they use the best quality materials and support local manufacturers and workers. Slate called their hoodies the greatest hoodie ever made, so find out why. Explore American Giant's collection of durable essentials at American-Giant.com, and you can get 20% off when you use code KFGD at checkout. That's 20% off at American-Giant.com, promo code KFGD. 
We're also brought to you by Credit Karma. If you've ever felt overwhelmed when it comes to handling your personal finances, you're not alone. And Credit Karma is here to help you make those big calls with more confidence. Whether you're refinancing credit card debt or paying for an upcoming expense, Credit Karma uses your credit data to show you fresh personal loan offers that are personalized just for you. It's totally free and easy to sign up for a Credit Karma account with no effect on your credit score. Credit Karma will even show you your approval odds so you can choose offers that you're more likely to get approved for and apply with more confidence. On Credit Karma, you can check out multiple loan offers side by side with easy to compare estimate terms to make sure you get the best deal. And once you've got a loan, Credit Karma will help you track your progress as you pay off your debt and even let you know if you can refinance and save. Ready to apply? Head to creditkarma.com slash loan offers to see personalized offers with your approval odds right now. Go to creditkarma.com slash loan offers to find the loan for you. That's creditkarma.com slash loan offers. Story number three, Andy. Uh, I decided to save the big news story for the third one down because wow. you know you gotta you gotta let people work for this one. You gotta get through the episode <laughs> to get to this one. All right. <laughs> story number three: the Donkey Kong movie starring Seth Rogen is reportedly in development. I'm sorry, I'm, what? <laughs> yeah, there's a Donkey Kong movie <laughs> movie coming through starring Seth Rogen. This is from Ryan Les- Leston at IGN. A solo Donkey Kong movie is reportedly in the works, with Seth Rogen set to reprise his upcoming role as the iconic Nintendo character. According to Giant Freakin' Robot, Donkey Kong will be the next Nintendo character heading to the big screen following the upcoming Super Mario Bros. movie. Seth Rogen has already been confirmed to voice Donkey Kong as a side character in the upcoming Super Mario Bros. movie, so it's not a huge leap to see Rogen head up his own solo project. GFR claims that the upcoming Donkey Kong solo movie is currently in development at Illumination, the studio that has previously brought to Despicable Me and the Minions to the big screen. The company is also working on the Super Mario Brothers movie starring Chris Pratt as everyone's f- favorite Italian plumber. Every time I read Chris Pratt uh, starring as Mario, <laughs> it makes me giggle a little bit. And also makes me giggle now that he's starring as Garfield, too, in the new It really movie. just feels like something out of a fictional world. Yeah. Like if, a, a TV show that Chris Pratt is playing Mario. There was a, there was a great meme that I saw of uh, the Mortal Kombat uh, tower from, like, the old Mortal Kombat games. And it's yeah. Chris Pratt as the player working their way up. And they've, like, just defeated Mario. And they're about to fight Do- Do- Garfield. And at, the very, <laughs> and at the very top of the tower is Martin Luther King. <laughs> oh my God, it's a it's, great meme. <laughs> we haven't talked about it much, but Garfield, Chris Pratt, like he, Chris Pratt would make such a better Odie. You know what I mean? It's yeah, crazy. That's a, that's a great it's point. Crazy. Yeah, we need somebody he, a little bit more deadpan for Garfield. Does he have like hidden voice talent? Like, is he a fantastic voice actor? Confunny.com says you're wrong. Like, who's he played as, before? He he's played uh, in Onward. He's the older brother. And as far as that, he but it's, is kind of just Chris Pratt. Well, that's what that's what I was gonna say. That's yeah. just Chris Pratt's voice with a yeah. little bit of you know like ah when he's yeah. doing the that that voice. God damn. Uh, The story continues, while very much an early report, the folks at Giant Freaking Robot have a good track record breaking exclusive movie news over the last couple of years, confirming that Ryan Gosling had been cast in the upcoming Barbie movie, (laughs) among other stories. Did uh, did you guys know about this? Yes. That happened? Yeah. I guess that happened. How was it, Andy? How was it? I don't think the movie's out yet. It's not out yet. I got oh, I, I, well, I, when I said, did that happen yet? I, I didn't realize. Like, I was oh, saying, I thought, you, I thought yeah. you were saying, did that happen? As in, like, was that news that happened? And yes, it is news uh, that happened. Kim. That's <laughs> wild. Yes. Uh, it's also worth pointing out that movies can be in development before being subsequently canceled. So this isn't an assurance that the movie will arrive. However, we do have breaking news. It looks like a trailer actually just dropped for this Donkey Kong movie. Whoa, Kevin, no way. Kevin, I have the trailer at the bottom of this news story if you're able to pull it up. You're, you're making some sort of gag, right? No, I don't think so. No, nah, man, this is, a, this is the legit this, I mean, trailer for the, the Mario trailer. Oh, yeah, trailer. this is real. Okay, yes. Uh, this is the legit real trailer for the Donkey Kong movie. Yeah, wow. I hate oh my God, the visuals. I wasn't expecting this. This is pretty good, actually. Yeah, it's wild. It's wild. There you go. Go ahead and click play. Can you hear what sounds A little drum music, if you please. Get ready for the hippest wow. tape of them all. Look out, you beauties. Here it comes Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong Country, oh, the legend of the there? crystal coconut. <laughs> I can't believe I get the crystal coconut. Hey, voice actor. We want like six accents. When I tell you I fucking back, love this movie, my this movie fucking lies. goes so hard. It's the Fair first feature length so 3D animated good. adventure so based on the so enormously popular. I'm I mean, look, from this now. Barrett and Blast, there was <laughs> nothing cooler than your favorite video game characters getting an animated version of themselves. Like, when I s- discovered that Mega Man had a cartoon, I was like, it. there is no level of quality 
yeah. that could tell you not to watch it. it exactly. As long as it's happening, yeah. it's oh, like, this yeah. is good. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It, it, no matter how horrifying it is when you look at the animations and actually take that in, it's just a fun time. Yeah. Oh, my God. I uh, will say I like the trailer more than the actual movie. I This is one that, as a kid, I had a VHS tape called hot news 64 and it was a 1999 vhs tape that was a promotional tape to advertise donkey kong 64 and jet force gemini so very obviously it worked on me mm. but at the end of that tape they then premiered the trailer like that exact trailer for donkey kong in the legend of the crystal skull or whatever the fuck it's called and <laughs> when i tell you that i repeatedly watched that trailer over and over and over again the movie itself is is whatever as a kid i i would watch it and i would watch there, there was a tv show that they had that was the same exact like animation and all that stuff i would watch that tv show at the back of my mind i knew it was janking garbage but yeah. i kept watching it because i love dk64 so much exactly exactly and there there is that dance sequence in in the movie that is just so good yeah. dancing around so good i can't wait for this new donkey kong movie though seth rogan as donkey kong is an inspired choice that can only yeah. that can only give birth it can only to lead to good things for yeah. sure Chris Pratt voicing every single animated character known to man. Very uninspired choice. He's not yeah. a voice actor. Get him out of here. Yeah, at this point, I just got to assume that it's all these studios talking to Chris Pratt because he's Star-Lord and he's the everyman and people love him because he's got uh, he's got a friendly nature to him. Um, and I think that like all these studios think that they are being really creative in hiring him and then they go, mm -hmm. oh, fuck, he's in that. God damn it. I didn't know he was going for that cartoon as well. Like we we kind of fucked up here. Um, yeah, well, I don't like the Scarlett Johansson syndrome where like for a straight year, you get casted and everything somehow because half of it is your agent is on their shit. They're, your agent is, is, is knocking Popping out the off. car. But also like they see you at, oh, you're a black widow. Oh, you're oh, you're Scarlett Johansson. Like we're going to get you. We're going to get you in our movie. And then everybody gets her and everything at the same time. And it's like, why are you playing this role <laughs> that you're not suitable for? Like, yeah, it's one of them things. I can't wait, though, to hear Chris Pratt do an Italian accent. Yeah, same here. It's gonna be great. Story number four, Andy. Uh, Netflix Games has started rolling out on Android with iOS on the way. This is Ash Parrish at The Verge. Ever since the announcement, Netflix was pursuing gaming content for its billion-dollar entertainment mega streaming platform, it was a matter of time before you could actually play games from the Netflix app. That day is here. Netflix tweeted yesterday, quote, Tomorrow, Netflix games will start rolling out on, on Netflix mobile app, first on Android with iOS on the way. It's early days, but we're excited to start bringing you exclusive games with no ads, no additional feeds, and no, or fees, and no in-app purchases, end quote. Users will be able to choose from one of five games, Stranger Things 1984, Stranger, Stranger Things 3, The Game, Shooting Hoops, Card Blast, and Teeter Up. Starting today, users can download Netflix games from the Google Play Store, requiring a Netflix subscription to play. Then, on November 3rd, Netflix will begin rolling out games to the app itself. When on a mobile device, Netflix games will come packaged in uh, its own dedicated row and have a dedicated tab. Though the current game offerings are a bit sparse, Netflix has acquired Oxenfree developer Night School, which might suggest more ambitious titles than the riveting shooting hoops are forthcoming. I don't know what to think about this, Blessing. I'm excited I... for shooting hoops and for hit the ball and for spike it over the net. I'm excited for those uh, titles. This doesn't really get me excited for anything. Uh, I think, if anything, let's see what happens with uh night school's next offering yeah. from netflix but i don't really understand who this is for i'm a um, big teeter up guy andy oh I'm not, really I'm not, i've never played teeter up <laughs> here's my thing i think this is not for us i think this is for kids who are going to be happy to, to to be scrolling through netflix on their parents' TVs and see a free video game that they can play and hop into it. And the the reason why I say this is about a month ago, I went to visit, and I think I've told this story like uh, 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 once before on a KFGD in a different context, but I went to visit my, uh, my sister and her family and my nephews, and all throughout hanging with them during the weekend, they were playing these janky as hell Android games on their TV through an app on their uh, Amazon Fire Stick. And it was one of those things where I was like, what the fuck? Like, what are these random ass free to play racing games that are basically it's like Trials Fusion type shit, but very generic. It's like, what is like, what is what is this? And like, they couldn't get enough of it. 
I think probably because they just didn't have a Switch console because my, my sister and her husband just didn't want to get them like a Switch or an Xbox because one right. money too. They don't want she doesn't want them to, to like get addicted to video games, whatever, whatever. Um, and so like those are the games that he's allowed to play. This strikes me as, hey, we're gonna like roll this out slowly, but I think the ideal goal is to get this on TV app, TV apps or like TV like streaming sticks and stuff, so that kids when they're when they're scrolling through and they're like, cool, we want to watch our. Coco Melons or whatever the kids watch on on these streaming services, they come across. Oh, is that a thing, or did you just put two words together? I think I think that's a thing. I might. That's either a sh- uh, like a kids show or it's a very tasty Melo, soft melon drink. bing bong or some shit. Typing, like it. In, <laughs> typing in it right now. No, Coco Melon is a kids show. It's a, it's oh, a, it's okay, a, it's very a good. kids thing. Very good. Um, but yeah, like I think I think this is mainly to have that thing of. A kid is scrolling through Netflix. They see the Netflix games thing. They go, oh, video games, and they start playing it. And it's another incentive for parents and people with kids to, like, keep a Netflix subscription to keep their kids busy. I guess this all just comes from sort of what your personal experiences are. Um, Because for me, I would have said this would have made a lot more sense for YouTube to introduce this sort of thing. Because in my household, when I go back home, the kids are always on YouTube. Uh, my nieces and my nephew are always on YouTube. And I feel like I feel like YouTube has a bit more of that offering where it's just a bunch of random Let's Players playing shit. And if it let you play games in that app without having to download the Google Play, whatever the hell they're calling it now, um, I feel like that would make a lot more sense. But again, you know, I think it all just comes from what are your families doing, right? And your your family's doing the Amazon Fire Sticks. My family's always doing the YouTube thing. So I guess that would make a bit more sense to me. But um, I guess I guess I just don't really foresee kids constantly browsing and perusing the options on Netflix. Yeah. And yeah. then maybe saying, oh, let me start up Stranger, Th- Stranger Things 3, the game. And with the with sort of acquiring Night School, that doesn't really seem like a kids thing to me. That is like that's a that's a that's a big boy studio right there, bless. Yeah, that's that is what I'm actually more curious about because I think the the when I when I look at the teeter ups and the the what was it shoot the shooting hoops and the card blasts, I think that is for kids in the way that like f- back in the day we played flash games on the internet and like we just played them because they were there and they're yeah. easy to access. I think oh, that's yeah. for, I think that's for that demographic. All the SpongeBob games and shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're playing the Teen Titans fighting game on Cartoon Network dot com. Uh, I think the night school thing is where it gets interesting because that does strike me as we are making this uh, move for the more more hardcore gaming audience. And that is what I wonder if I wonder if that plays out the way they want it to, because that strikes me as let's do let's go for the kids. But then let's also go for the adults somewhat and try to make this a legitimate, a legitimate thing. I don't know if they're going to be able to get the us's of the world, even though like night school is a dope developer. I don't want to play a night school game on Netflix. That's not the way I want to play their games. Yeah. I want to play their games on Xbox or PlayStation. On my Android phone, especially like I don't exactly. I just don't want that experience. Maybe night school is working on Card Blast 2, though. Bless. You don't never know. I mean, maybe. Who knows? Shooting I hoops three. <laughs> Card Blast 2 with really cool look at, with a really cool art style. Um, but yeah, like I don't, and I'm with you, too, that like I think YouTube would be the better avenue for this and maybe for them it's just like they have technically they have google stadia as a thing but for this strategy of let's get the generic shoot shooting hoops card blast teeter teeter up teeter games. Oh. my uh, another thing like when i was visiting my my uh, nephews right like they were hooked on the youtube stuff watching let's plays for games that i had never even heard of mm. um and like the the games that they're watching again fell in line with those like cheap uh uh like new grounds like mod modded games a lot of stuff they would watch would watch would fall into into that category and it, it could be so easy for youtube to have a thing where it's like cool you want to play this game click right here we'll take you right to it uh yeah. that would that would that would be big for youtube uh and i wouldn't be surprised if they're working on that as well but yeah for netflix it's an interesting one but i also think it's the thing of kids will find a way to find games like kids will if there's a game on their Roku, if there's a game on their Fire Stick, they will find it. And so I think I think that that uh, falls into that as well. Andy, let's talk about story number five. Niantic is shutting down the Pokemon Go inspired Harry Potter game. This is Ethan Gatch at Kotaku. Just two years after it launched, Niantic is already giving up on its Harry Potter Wizards Unite augmented reality experiment. What was supposed to be the Pokemon Go for the popular fantasy series will instead just become a memory when the game goes offline forever on January 31st, 2022. 
In the meantime, Niantic will remove the mobile game from the app and Google Play stores on December 6th. It will also increase rewards and decrease cooldown times to make the games less grindy in its final days, while remaining bosses and events will continue to go live until the end of January. Any money players have already spent in-game, however, will remain there. Quote, Players would not be able to receive a refund on past purchases, except where otherwise required by law, Harry Potter Wizards Unite's developers wrote in today's announcement. They continue, We have a variety of fun gameplay changes during the remaining few months, so you will have the full opportunity to enjoy your remaining gold, end quote. The free-to-play game was stuffed full of optional microtransactions and harvested player data, but not enough apparently. Venture Beat report. <laughs> That's a that's a fun way to say that. VentureBeat r- reports that based on data from mobile analytics from Sensor Tower, while Pokemon Go made over one billion dollars this year alone, Wizards Unite only brought in forty million dollars. Quote: With nine games and apps in our development pipeline, some of which will go go into soft launch in 2022, there are many more amazing worlds that we want to bring to life in new and unique ways. Niantic wrote in a blog post today. I didn't know Pokemon Go so had it like that, bless. I didn't Dude. know they were doing one billion in a year. Yeah, they're doing, like a they're doing Beast by Trey sure, money. Right? <laughs> that is definitely some typo shit, but, uh, Kevin. Wizards <laughs> Unite 40 million seems like a dream come true for any small developer, but obviously not enough to keep this game going. It's so depressing, yeah. Blessing, to, read, to have you read the sentence about in the final days we will boost the xp and make it easier to level up that just sounds so sad to me it just really reminds me of hey your favorite childhood store is going not that this game has you know that sort of uh, vibe anyway but your childhood store is going out of business all things must go the manager is leaving town it's just it it, stuff like like that is always it's always sad to me whenever i see the videos of the last day of matrix online or the last day of whatever video game that existed yeah it's always sad to me blessing yeah, it, it it is funny to read that like oh they only made forty million dollars off of Wizards Unite. That's not enough. But like you know, I I think there's a scale to it where I think if the Pikmin game was making forty million dollars, that'd be a little bit better than a Harry Potter game making right. forty million dollars, right? Especially when you look at that compared to Pokemon Go making one billion dollars. They have a thing they're going for over there at Niantic and their partnerships. And so with them saying that they have a bunch of games that that, that they have nine games uh, in apps in their development pipeline, and a lot of those are going to soft launch in twenty twenty two. I assume that um, that includes their Pikmin thing, which I guess is soft launching right now, and so maybe yeah. that doesn't include their Pikmin thing. But that inc- that 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 is a lot of games at once to be working on and trying to get off the ground and trying to be making a lot of money off of and so i guess i can understand why they look at their ip they look at their partnerships and go pokemon is doing this much this pikmin game is estimated to do this much this game for us is doing i forget what other uh things they got were they the ghostbusters guys were they the ones that did ghostbusters Uh, no i don't believe so i don't think i think greg was obsessed with that either way right they look at their slate and they're like cool these are expectations harry potter even though $40 million is a lot of money, we expected $300 million, right? Or whatever that, that, that is. Um, so with that, you know, it, it makes sense. Rest in peace. I didn't really know anybody else playing this Harry Potter game, though. Yeah, I mean, $40 million for a game that I forgot was even a thing um, is pretty shocking. What do you think the other, the other IPs are? I mean, with them doing Pikmin, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe they have some more Nintendo stuff in the pocket. Mario hey, why did my mind immediately go to imagine a Pokemon one? <laughs> <laughs> like, can you imagine catching Pokemon in real life? Yeah, there's probably something there. I mean, what like what other collectible stuff is there? You know, like I guess you can kind of turn anything into that if they if they're willing to make a Ghostbusters thing or like I, yeah, I forget was there a Garfield one? I feel like there was a Garfield one. No, shut the fuck up. There's no shot. There's no shot. I probably, probably haven't mixed up with Garfield. What the cards hell are you head. collecting? Uh, lasagnas? What are you collecting in a oh, Garfield one? <laughs> Garfield AR game. There was sounds, a Garfield one. Oh my god. It sounds right. You know. Garfield Go is literally what it's called. Yeah. The AR treasure hunt. That sounds so fake. That sounds so fake. You collect Mondays as the OVG. <laughs> <laughs> collect spaghetti. <laughs> You collect that, uh, fucking uh, Chris Pratt. It's weird because I, I, I'm just starting to wonder what sort of properties actually make sense and what properties seem worth it. And collecting Pokemon in a world where that parallels kind of the OG Pokemon experience makes a whole lot of sense. I don't really know what other like card capture Sakura. What are we doing here? I don't know. I mean, somebody <laughs> in chat said Neopets, would, which would be a banger. I would play the Neopets one for a solid 30 minutes. I'll go mm. on one walk. 
if that maybe half a walk i'd get tired halfway through and come back home and be like no i can't do this but Bakugan. yeah no <laughs> I, I do wonder oh bakugan is a good is a good one yokai watch there there are quite a few uh options i think you have there but i think the thing is like what ip when you're the when you're the folks who did pokemon go yeah what are the ips that are going to be comparable or that you can work off of because i think with that like you pikmin comes from them already having those like that connection to nintendo and then something like harry potter comes from comes from that being one of the bigger ips in the world and so like what are the comparable ips that you can have how, that? fast and, and also furious, how many of the next cars how many of the next six have to do with nfts like <sighs> Think about that. That's all. That's, I don't want to. That's all it's going to become, dude. I don't want to think about that. Let's think about something else that's a little bit more positive with story number six. Dreams joins forces with Ghostbusters Afterlife for an official minigame based on the movie. Uh, I'm pulling from Steven Tal- Tailby at Push Square. And Kevin, I have a video they can play as I'm reading through uh, without sound uh, that is showing off some of what the game looks like and the cast of Ghostbusters Afterlife playing Dreams, which I think is really funny. Dreams is whatever you want it to be, and Media Molecule is using that that potential to forge some amazing collaborations with other brands. The latest of these is a team up with Ghostbusters Afterlife, the new reboot of the classic film franchise. Dreams community members Slurm McKenzie and Bivzin uh, were co- contacted by the studio to help put together a mini game based on the movie, and the end result is a playable or the end result is playable in the game right now. Simply called Ghostbusters Afterlife, this short arcadey experience is available in Dreams from now until February 28th, 2022. The minigame is a first-person experience in which you try to capture ghosts in a warehouse using the iconic proton beam. You'll have to wrangle wrangle with the ghosts to reel them in and trap them, but causing too much damage to the environment will run up a damages bill, which is taken from your score. In the video, you can watch some of the film's cast and crew play the game, including Finn Wolfhard and director Jason Reitman. And Andy, if you would ask me, is the kid from Stranger Things in this game, I would have been like, I don't know. Or not in the game, sorry, in this movie, I would have been like, I have no idea. That oh, is the, really? That is, that is the kid from Stranger Things, right? Yeah, yeah. You didn't know that? No, I don't, I don't think I, I even watched a trailer for oh, this wow. movie. Oh, wow. I'm not a okay. Ghostbusters person. Yeah, I mean, well, neither am I. I just feel like I can't avoid it with <laughs> working with Greg. Uh but look how little the stars of the movie actually want to be there. Like, I don't think they want to be here, bless. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, of course they don't. Like, like look, look yeah. at this. It just doesn't seem like a very uh, great experience. But kind of wild for Dreams to wrangle up this sort of partnership at this point in its kind of uh, life. And I don't really know how much life yeah. Dreams still has, Blessing. I think you could speak to that better, just knowing the fan base a little bit more. But... It's kind of surprising to me that they can still kind of wrangle up this sort of partnership and Dreams is, you know, two years in, three years in, and it feels like the it's hype like year, is year kind of... You're going to shut the fuck up. Oh my you don't, God. You I guess don't it's think, in February, maybe too, I guess. You don't think it's more like this is how desperate Ghostbusters is to get the word out there that it's coming out now and not, you know... I mean, it's ago. Sony, right? I think this is... It is a weird crossover, but it, I think it, it all comes back to sony pictures and sony interactive entertainment and them looking at each other and go and going how do we advertise ghostbusters with playstation and playstation look in their catalog and go hey this could be an opportunity to pimp dreams a little bit and so they shake hands and 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 do it this way um i think this is probably better for dreams than it is for ghost (laughs) ghostbusters afterlife uh, in that scenario but it does make me i mean i'm split between dreams because i am i am with you andy that yeah, like we're about two years into dreams and the game just isn't popping off the way that I think it should be popping off. And I I want more of these partnerships because I think these partnerships could highlight the awesome things about dreams. The fact that, hey, like we have a Ghostbusters game in here. I remember ha- like in, back in, in the summer, we were talking about their partnership with a car brand. I think it might have been Mercedes or something. And we were talking about how like, oh, yeah, this is a weird partnership. But my <laughs> takeaway was... My takeaway was, oh, this can open up the door for a lot more cooler partnerships down the road. And this is something like I was talking about. Granted, like, I don't know if this is going to be like the big thing that puts dreams on the map by any means. I think they still have a ways to go in terms of, hey, what if we are able to partner with a game developer? Or what if we are able to partner with, um, I don't know, Niantic? <laughs> like, what what are the big brands that we can partner with to make this make this shit hit? What if we could partner with Marvel, for example, or something big like that? to Fortnite. To, get like or Fortnite or get something to get a big quality dreams uh project undergo because this dreams feels almost very like 
it feels very user created just in terms of what we've seen from the trailer you know it looks like a a, a, a fake video game made for a movie <laughs> if you're watching the gameplay it doesn't really yeah. look like a full fully fledged thing and i think if you're going to if you're going to go for promo like this you got to put out the bangers like i think in, i think in in that case you reach at the top and find the most talented dreams creators you can find or have it be media molecule original and create something that is a fucking banger to have people go oh shit this is in dreams i'm gonna check this out as opposed to this mini game that i don't know man i'm not gonna check this out this, yeah uh, this might be and a greg miller joint I, I was expecting fortnite and ghostbusters to have something more um I guess time sensitive when it comes to the release of Afterlife and maybe just the release sort of bungled everything up. Mm -hmm. But I I would have thought we would have seen, you know, Finn Wolfhard be in the game or or get gotten one of the the characters from the movies as opposed to just kind of like the generic here are the Ghostbusters Dude, that exist in Fortnite I, already. Like that would have been that would have been such a good idea to have Finn Wolfhard voice one of the characters in this Dreams mini game. That, that one would have been a dream come true for the Dreams creators to be able to go, hey, I have a game, and Finn Wolfhard is voicing a character in it. And then also for people to go, oh, shit, there's a game, and fucking the kid from Stranger Things and after Ghostbusters Afterlife is in it. Oh, yeah, let me check this out. I wonder what the voice acting and, like, the thing is like. I think that would have been the, like, the X factor that would have brought people in. It just being a random mini game that is Ghostbusters Afterlife made by fans and them showing it in this trailer and the cast looking like they're, they, they barely want to be there is that, like, I'm here yeah. so I don't get fined kind of thing. I don't think it. I don't think that's the. <laughs> I mean, it really just. It, it's kind of a bummer thinking of, you know, you want the hype around this movie to be at an all time high. Hey, let's get our cast in. Let's get our cast in Fortnite, or let's get our cast in Roblox, or whatever the hell. And it's like, and Sony goes, no, 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 we got this game called Dreams, and they're like, ah, oh, dude, we don't. Like, come on, Sony, don't make us partner with the in-house brand thing just because you want to strengthen yeah. your in-house brand or because it's cheaper, you know. But you got to yeah. also assume it's at the point blessing where the budget for a lot of these movies that have been delayed and delayed and delayed, they, I mean, there are budgets for these things and you can only kind of waste <laughs> a certain amount of money before Spend. you go, f fuck it, put it in dreams, you know. Yeah. Uh, real quick, also shout outs to this kid on the right. His dope ass sweater. That's, That's a really so cool. sick sweater. Yeah. That is so a really cool. cool sweater. Also, I did have to look up Finn Wolfhard on Google to make sure that he wasn't in the Naked Brothers band. Do you remember the Naked Brothers band? Of course Andy? I do. Yeah. Of course I <laughs> when do. I, when I see Finn Wolfhard and I hear that his name is Finn Wolfhard, I'm like, certainly he's it's one of the Wolfhard? Naked Brothers kids. Wolfhard. Yeah. Wolf. Yeah. It is. It's, it's Finn Wolfhard. Like a hard name. wolf. <laughs> yeah. Which is a yeah. great, great stage name. Yeah. Um, and great but, name in general, I'll say. That's so weird that you're like uh, that you're not that exposed to who he is because he. I mean, he, I just feel like he's. I just know him from Stranger Things. Yeah, I, f I, I feel like he's kind of. I mean, he was also in It. Like he's kind yeah. of like the. I guess yeah. The, he blew the, up. The, I feel like a little. He bit, was like, yeah. He was like the movie kid, but also I guess I'm. I've seen him do a lot of stuff with Game Grumps uh, in their videos, and he's like friends with them, and he'll pop up in their videos every once in a while. So. Um, yeah. No, I knew very much that he is not the Naked Brothers band kid. <laughs> but I look. I, the reason why I got to mix up is as I looked it up, I was like, "Oh no, their names. The, the names of the Naked Brothers band kids are Nat Wolf and Alex Wolf." And oh, I feel like that's they look close. Yeah, this close. And though they were yeah, actually they curly in, hair. they were in old the M Night Shyamalan movie that was terrible mm. that, that came out in July. Nah, that movie was awful. And honestly, what a horrible time that was. It, if you told me that he was in any way related to them, just off of the way he looks, I'd be like, "Oh yeah, that makes sense." Yeah, yeah, I can yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. I can see. He it. looks a little bit like them. Got the curly hair, got the dark hair. Um, mm -hmm. Paler, though. Interesting. A lot paler. Yeah. Very tall. Oh, He's sure. very tall. Finn Wolfhard? Don't bring that yeah. up, Andy. Yeah. How tall? Like, he's like, like a solid five foot eight. He's, I, think that's I, I feel like he's at this point probably like six feet tall. He's, I'll look yeah. it up. I'll look into it. Look, look, look it up. I mean, I, I think any, any I height above. A five <laughs> seven. I forgot Finn. his name. <laughs> <laughs> Blessing, if I want to know what came to Mom and Grab Shops, where Oh, go? my God. Oh, Andy, you would go to the official list Five of upcoming software across each and every platform. Uh, I on, reversed it on you. God damn it. I, I, I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared. Each and every platform, as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah. Out today. Now, Andy, did I forget <laughs> to copy and paste the out today to the doc? Maybe, but I'm quick with the fingers, and so I'm already on the website. Uh, out today, we got the Solitaire Conspiracy for Xbox Series X and Xbox One. Bloodshore is out today on Switch, and it's also out on other platforms. Uh, that's Switch, PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. And then Time Loader is out today on 
PC. Uh, we got no new dates for you. And so, Andy, I can take you directly over to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong, where people write in and let us know what we got wrong as we got it wrong so we can correct it. For those watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames and on podcast services around the globe. Um, and let's see here. The the Kunkka uh, wrote yeah. in and said, <laughs> Blessing, <laughs> Blessing said that Overwatch 1 had been sunset and will not receive new maps. The latest map, Malavento, was added on September 29th, 2021, which I had no idea about. Um, but but again, it's a deathmatch map. We're talking like... Oh, uh, we're talking I, about I, yeah, traditional Overwatch maps. Yeah, like a map that could be added to the competitive rotation, you know? Hmm, hmm. Mm. Bander SN says Chris Pratt was Emmett in the Lego movies. Oh, that's, that's right. true. And he sounded just like Chris Pratt. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, like a happy Chris Pratt. Which uh, uh, awesome I, I'd Chris argue Pratt. that that's exactly how Chris Pratt sounds. Like he is a happy Chris Pratt. Yeah, this is a dream life. Very similar to Ryan Reynolds. They've got their thing. They've got their kind of tone and their vibe. You know. Big Bad Beluga says in Garfield Go, you you caught Garfield in. You caught Garfield in by searching for him in AR. I'm reading this verbatim. <laughs> and unlocked snippets of comic strips you could turn into coins. Those coins uh, could then buy gift cards to Starbucks, Subway, and even Amazon. What the fuck, what? really? That sounds Holy so whoa. stupid. One second, I'll download this right now. <laughs> that sounds Free so Starbucks, dumb. Free Starbucks, Andy. Do you think about that? Well, we're uh, getting breaking news, boss. What's happening? Yeah, I'm copying and pasting. I'm, 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 I'm going to confirm this. I want to confirm this and see what it actually is. Yeah, I don't trust them. They don't know. Oh, it's Master Chief Collection. Yeah, it's just, it's Master Chief Collection stuff that I don't think would have made it to the, sh the show um, in general. But breaking, Halo, the Master Chief Collection is getting some really great content to celebrate 20 years of Halo. You're getting the Orion armor set, first seen in the original 99 Halo reveal. Um, weapon skins featuring an Xbox color scheme and the OG Xbox back accessories and more. And so if you're super into Master Chief Collection, boom, you got some accessories. And then I think that is it. This last one has to be a troll. Well, let me make sure this last one is a troll. Oh no, yeah. It's 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 literally it's a it's a troll from Xbox directly. Xbox tweeted out today that Chris Pratt is now the voice of Master Chief. Mr. Chief. Mr. Chief, sorry, sorry. Which is sorry. the old the old one of the one of the first memes in existence, I feel. Like Mr. No. Chief is one of the first things that I remember being like I don't know what to call this, but in the future, it will be called a meme blessing. <laughs> That's good. Mm -hmm. It's like a, it's almost like Ko how Kojima predicted memes in Metal Gear Solid 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Very similar thing. Uh, tomorrow's hosts for Kind of Funny Games Daily are Tim and Tam for Tim Tam Thursday. If you're watching this live on Twitch right now, after this is Darkest Dungeon 2 and unpacking with Mike snow bike my chemical romance if you want to catch that stream wow. later you can subscribe to youtube.com slash kind of funny plays you like that remember this has been kind of funny games daily each and every weekday live right here on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games we run you through the nerdy news you need to know about we have a patreon post show for those that are subbed at the silver level of patreon.com slash kind of funny games so stick around for that otherwise until next time game daily <laughs>